Who here could explain to me the graphic design principle of visual balance or just balance? I'll give it to you, not that easy to comprehend. But the good news in that in this video, I'm gonna show you what visual balance is, when to use it and how it can help you create better designs. And because it is not so simple to understand, I have collected a bunch of examples to show you. So let's go. What is up everyone, Ronnie here. Welcome back to our channel. This is the best place for you to learn about Canva and more. Today we are talking about the graphic design principles, graphic design principles number five of our series. Today we talk about visual balance or balance. So let's dive right in and start with a little definition of what balance is when we talk about graphic design. The most common definition of balance is that balance is the distribution of the visual weight of our objects, colors, textures, and space in our composition, in our design. If the design was a scale, all of these elements should be balanced to make the design feel stable. So it's a question of equilibrium. It's a question of stability. It's a question of balance. And it is really how the different elements of your designs are weighted against each other on both sides of your designs to create cohesiveness, to create harmony, and that feeling of balance, that satisfaction when you look at the design. And your composition should be balanced in a different way. It should be balanced horizontally, when you draw a line in the middle, you have the two sides, vertically, up and down, diagonally, and also foreground versus background. So all of these different fields of your design should be weighted properly against each other to make your design feel balanced. So that is what I understand about balance or visual balance in terms of graphic design. It is a little bit more abstract than the rest of the graphic design principles we have covered so far in this series, but I do believe with the examples I'm about to show you, it will become easier to comprehend. So hang on there. So when you come across a design or a photography, in this case, we have a photo right here, which is well balanced, you as the viewer will subconsciously feel connected to that image. You will feel a sense of satisfaction when you look at that picture, but it is very subtle. You might not understand why straight away, but underlying the satisfaction, this feeling of connection is the graphic design principle of balance or visual balance. So that is exactly what we want to explore in this tutorial. Learn more how you can achieve this balance in your design. But before that, let's have a look at some more examples of photos that are well balanced, that use visual balance in the proper way. What do you notice? What do you feel when you look at these photos? What does visual balance achieve in terms of design and maybe emotion. Well, the first word that comes to my mind is stability and then probably structure. Indeed, when I look at some well-balanced photos like we just saw or pieces of design, there's something aesthetically pleasing. There's something comforting to my eyes as we enjoy to find structure in what we are looking at. So there's that feeling of satisfaction. So the structure brings order, brings satisfaction. And then another word that could come to my mind is dynamism. And we will talk more about this notion of dynamism, of movement, when we talk about asymmetric balance in just a second. All right, guys, now that we know what visual balance is, and we also understand why it is important, let's have a look at how we can create that visual balance in our designs. When I was doing my research about balance, I found that there were three main types of balance. The first one is symmetrical balance. Then we have asymmetrical balance. And then there is a third type called radial balance. So what I'm going to do now is to jump into each of these types, tell you exactly what they are, show you some examples and how they differ from the other types. All right, so let's start with the first type, which is creating symmetrical balance. Symmetrical balance is probably the easiest to understand of the three because we all pretty much know what symmetry is all about. OK, 
okay, in symmetrical balance, the elements used on one side of your design are pretty much equal in terms of weight to the elements on the other side of your design. That is because we use a technique called mirroring. So let me show you how mirroring works using these three examples right here. So these are three Canva templates that I found in the library. And we are going to open each of these templates one by one. And I'm going to comment and show you how the mirroring technique has been applied in each case. The first template I want to explore is this one right here. So you see if we draw a line in the middle, so this line, this red line right here, I'm going to position it right in the center of my design. And now you can see that all of the elements on one side of the design, for example, this left side right here, are mirrored on this other side. And this could be the number of elements, it could be the shape of these elements, could be their size or their colors. So all of these different attributes are taken into consideration when it comes to measuring the weight of these elements. But here, we can see that not only the line in the middle is almost like a perfect mirror, but also the same colors have been applied, the same shapes, the same positioning or spacing on the page. Everything is super well balanced. So this is a very structured, a very balanced. The symmetry is almost perfect. So this gives us a strong feeling of order, of structure on this design. Neither side of the design feels heavier than the other one. So we could say that this design is pretty much perfectly balanced. Now let's move over to the second example, this second template. And here we see that the mirror has been applied horizontally. So we have the line in the middle right here. Again, I'm gonna make sure this is in the middle. Yeah, the line is perfectly in the middle. And we see the same types of elements. So we have these uh, photo frames right here. We have one text box right here and one text box right here. Now, the symmetry is not as perfect as in the previous example because we have a bigger font, like a bolder font here on the superior part of the design why we have a smaller font, like less weight for the inferior part of the design. But still, the other attributes have been respected. It's not only the size of the element, it's also their shape, their positioning, their number of appearance. So here, we can say that this design is almost perfectly balanced horizontally because we have the same amount of elements on each side. Also, their colors are pretty similar. Everything is pretty similar. So yeah, I would say this is a very balanced design using the mirroring technique. And then we have the third example right here where the mirror has been applied diagonally. All right, so you can see that the line is simply going from the top left corner to the lower right corner, so a perfect diagonal. And when you look at the different elements on either side of this red line, the mirror, we can see they are almost similar in terms of shape. We can see this star right here. We see every single frame pretty much split in two. And then we see a big text box here, a big text box here, two lines of text, two lines of text. It's almost perfectly mirrored as well. So these are the examples I wanted to show you to illustrate symmetrical design, which is, I believe, the easiest to comprehend because again, we all know what symmetry looks like. So now when it comes to using Canva and Canva's features to achieve this symmetrical balance, what are some of the features that could be very useful when we have to create symmetrical design? Well, the very first one that I would mention, and you've seen here different examples, is templates. These three examples were all templates that I found in the Canva library. So the way you go about this is you could try typing under the design tab and the template symmetry and see what comes up. So for example, we have this one right here suggested to us, which is a pretty symmetrical template. So I'm going to add a page and show it to you. There we go. This template is pretty symmetrical. Again, if we draw the line right here in the middle, it's pretty symmetrical. So that's one way of going about it, going about finding symmetrical templates and start from there. Another Canva feature that could reveal very handy when it comes to creating that symmetry is the guides. Okay, so in order to find the guides, you have to go to your file button right here under view setting. And I believe this is a new section show rulers and guides. Okay, there is also a keyboard shortcut, but show rulers and guides. This will show you your rulers on the left and upper side. And what you do is that you simply click on that ruler and bring a guide to the middle. When you are exactly at the middle, it will snap. You see here it snaps and it becomes uh, pink. It changes its color. So when it snaps, 
it means you are exactly at the middle. You can do this as well on the horizontal side of things. And now you have applied these two guides to your designs and you can use the guides as your mirror. So this is a very useful feature to achieve symmetry in your Canva design. And then the third Canva feature that you should probably leverage to achieve symmetrical balance is the layouts. Layouts as of today are only available in presentation document types. So here, this is not a presentation, I'm not even sure what this is. Let me see, this is a card, okay? I don't need a card. So you need to go back to your Canva homepage and then start a presentation, the presentation right here, 16 by nine, whatever. So once you have a presentation document, now you can go to your design tab and find a layouts tab right here. So once you use the layouts tab, you will find a bunch of different pre-made layouts right here and some of them use the principle of symmetrical balance. For example, this one right here, symmetrical balance. Let me find another one. We have this one right here, symmetrical balance. We have this one right here, pretty much symmetrical balance as well if we split it horizontally, etc., etc. So the layouts, again, only available in presentation document types will help you achieve that symmetrical balance. All right, so these were three features that you can leverage to create that symmetrical balance on your designs. And when you do so, you will infuse a specific vibe, a specific feature feeling into your designs. And that feeling is one of structure, okay? It is one of organization. Everything is well ordered. So you will convey this message, this feeling of order. Everything is orderly arranged on the design. And also stability. So these are the main keywords, structure, organization, order, stability. This is what symmetrical balance will help you achieve in your designs. But there is something you should consider, guys, when creating symmetrical balance in your design. Because these designs are very structured, they are very organized. Some people might feel that they are not as daring, maybe they are not as interesting, because they are so structured, so squared. And some people might even find designs that always use symmetrical balance quite boring. So my advice is try to switch it up, like try to use symmetrical balance on some of the pages of a presentation, for example, and then switch it up with something else. Like do not always use the mirroring technique, otherwise it is true that the final result could seem a little bit boring. So just be aware of that. That is the downside of symmetrical balance. It could be perceived as a little bit boring. All right, guys, this wraps up the part about symmetrical balance. Before we jump over to the next section of the video, which is about asymmetrical balance, why not you take a second to smash the like button? This will really help me as a YouTuber and Diana to make a living and to continue producing great videos like we do every single day. So thank you for that. Thank you for your support. We love you all. And we love reading your messages in the comment section as well. So if you have any question about anything really about any of the videos, make sure you connect with us via the comment section because we read them all and we answer to them all. So thank you for that support. All right, back to the tutorial. Let's talk about creating asymmetrical balance. In asymmetrical balance, both sides of your design will not be equal in terms of the weight of the elements, but somehow it will still feel balanced. What? Yeah. That's when it gets a little bit more abstract, a little bit more complicated, but don't worry, got your back and plenty of examples, so hang on. All right, let's start with this photo right here. This is a good example of asymmetrical balance. Visual balance doesn't mean that every element has to be distributed with perfect symmetry on your page. Balance can also be achieved through asymmetry. Okay, let that sink in for a second. So what this means is that you can have different weights on either side of your design, but the design remains balanced by how the heavier and lighter elements are positioned and stacked against each other. Okay, so when I look at this photo right here, it is obvious that the principle of mirror is not applied here. Okay, this is not symmetrical balance. This is asymmetrical balance, but it is still balanced. So why is it balanced? Why does it feel balanced? So what's going on here is that you have different weights on each side. So obviously the left side is heavier 
than the right side. There is more going on. There are more elements on that side. There are like a variety of elements while the other side is pretty empty, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a purple background. But somehow the difference in weight in these elements is balanced out okay by how these elements are stacked or positioned against each other so for example here we see the cassette is made out of different things so you have the texture of the cassette which balances out the fact that there is no texture here so it brings an interesting element also you have the colors we see that the cassette has some pink in it but also some purple and actually a lot of purple okay which recalls this purple right here and maybe the fact that we have some purple here balances out the fact that the purple section is smaller on the other side so when the elements on your page are not symmetrical but instead balance each other out through color shape size texture we can speak of asymmetrical balance like in this case right here so we see that an asymmetrical composition is a composition in which we deliberately create some sort of imbalance between the elements of that design and to create this imbalance to create this asymmetry this anomaly we'll often use contrast contrast in terms of small versus big light versus dark textured versus plain etc etc but contrast is the keyword here okay let's move on when we do this when we create this sense of asymmetry by creating contrast we create a tension and give our composition a certain sense of movement or a specific dynamic okay like in this example right here so you can see here on one side i have a lot of colors a lot of complexity and a lot of different elements going on while on the other side i have simplicity I have order, I have a clean design, like not too many things going on. So on this landing page, the asymmetry has been generated by adding contrast. And that is the contrast between complexity on the left side with lots of colors, lots of things going on, lots of elements on top of each other and simplicity on the other side with lots of empty space and a pretty simplistic design and a one only call to action with also one single color on top of the black color so this is a good example of creating asymmetry by generating this contrast and here we are contrasting complexity versus simplicity all right let's move on let's jump back into the canva template library because i want to show you some templates that use asymmetrical design this time and the first one i want to draw your attention to is this one right here so we can see this is a website landing page or a website homepage, and we can see on one side we have a big illustration okay this is only one element while on the other side we have a series of smaller elements okay so here the asymmetry has been created by adding contrasting elements the first one is scale okay we have a huge element on one side and a, a multitude of smaller elements on the other side the contrast on this design has also been created by the type of element that we've been using we have an illustration right here versus a bunch of text boxes pretty much right here on the other side so these are the two contributing types of contrasts that generate this asymmetry in the design this asymmetrical balance the design still feels pretty sturdy pretty pleasing to the eye and therefore balance because the elements balance each other out Okay, small versus big, illustration versus text. So there is a balance of what constitutes a consistent, a coherent landing page for a website. All right, this is the second template I wanted to show you. Here again, asymmetrical balance, but this time this asymmetry has been generated by a different kind of contrast. Contrast between different shapes. So we have squares and we have rectangles, but also contrast between different size, different scale of the elements. We have the two big squares on the left side, and then we have four smaller squares on the upper side of the design. And then we have the big rectangle. And that big rectangle, because it is empty, it doesn't have any color. The plain background of that rectangle right here with the text box balances out the abundance of color in the rest of the design. So because this area seems more empty, it was the appropriate space 
to add text. And obviously text over the colors and the patterns would not have been very legible. But this is why this design feel balanced at the end of the day is because the elements balance each other out quite nicely. So again, a good example of asymmetrical balance. All right, so we are making some good progress, guys. We have seen that asymmetrical balance is very often produced by adding, generating contrast into your designs. And we have seen a couple of different examples where different types of contrast have been used. So let's recap the different kinds of contrast that we have come across. We've come across complexity versus simplicity. We've come across dark versus light colors. We've come across small versus large elements, talking about scale, textured versus plain, and also squared versus more round shapes. Okay, so these are, in a nutshell, the different types of contrast. I'm sure there are other types of contrast that could be generated that I didn't think of for this slide right here, but this is what we've come across. So these different types of contrast created the asymmetry, but the fact that they balance each other out kind of reestablishes the balance, and therefore we talk about asymmetry balance. I hope this was clear. This was my best shot at explaining this complex topic, which is asymmetrical balance. Apart from contrast, there is another way to help generate or create asymmetrical balance in your design. And that is to use specific design elements to achieve movement. Movement in the way we interpret a specific design or a specific dynamism on your page. We could even talk about the tension. Like we would create a tension that would force our attention to go to some specific parts of the design. So let's talk about this. The first one of these three design elements is colors. Okay, so the idea here is to use a touch, like a hint of bright color in some small area of the design that will create a tension with the larger area of your design, which is of more muted colors or muted tones or more neutral colors. So a hint of color in a sea of big neutral tones. So that could create a tension. Oh, what is this? And you look there. So then you have to capitalize on that attention that you could grab to create that movement of the viewer like looking at this part of the design. That is the movement. So that's the first example when you create that movement, that tension with colors. The second design element you can use to create that movement, to create that dynamism in the design is shapes. You could balance out the positioning of different shapes on your design to create a focal point or to create a point of interest in your design where you will direct the attention, therefore creating that movement, creating that tension in a specific part of your design, like we can see on this example right here. And then the last type of design elements that you can use is patterns, okay? You can use different patterns and balance out these patterns with some empty areas or plain areas on your design to really create that tension or create that dynamism in your design, like we can see on this last example right here. So I hope you get the point by manipulating, by balancing out different types of design elements, we kind of make the design more interesting. We drive the attention of the viewer to specific focal points we have chosen on the design. So this is what we call asymmetrical design by creating movement. So there you go, asymmetrical balance, two ways to generate it by creating contrast or by creating movement, dynamism or tension on your page. Now let's talk a little bit about the why, like what's the purpose of asymmetrical balance. In general, designs using asymmetrical balance are usually preferred over designs using symmetrical balance. That is because when you use symmetry, your designs become pretty predictable. Okay, you kind of know what to expect when you look at them. There's no real surprise there. It's pretty square, it's pretty straightforward. On the other hand, when you look at a design where asymmetrical balance has been applied, then the design is all of a sudden, it's more interesting. There might be something that surprises you. It's unconventional. So you look at it twice and then you find it more, yeah, more interesting. It surprises you. So that's the whole point of using asymmetrical balance to kind of step out of the box and create something a bit more unconventional. And then there is a third type of balance called radial balance. We'll go over this one pretty quickly because it's 
quite straightforward, but I wanted to cover radial balance as well to give you a complete overview of the different types of visual balance that can be applied in a design. In radial balance, rather than balancing both sides of your design around a centered line, you choose to use a single point of focus. Usually this is done by focusing around the center of your design, but not always. It could be another point on your design that is not the exact center, but basically that's what it is. We are arranging the elements by gravitating around a center that we have chosen on our design. So I will wrap up the tutorial by showing you an example of radial design, this template right here. Again, it is a template that I found in the Canva template library, but we can clearly see that the focal point, the central point, is the center of the design. So point pretty much somewhere here. And then the other elements on that design, be it the different arrows, the different text boxes with the different options from one to six, and the little paragraphs here have been placed at equal distance from this center point. So that's why we call this a radial balance because it radiates from that one point in the middle. So in order to create radial balance design is you choose a focal point. Usually it's going to be the center of your design. And then you start arranging your elements at equal distance from that center. And then you can also play around with other design attributes in different weights like colors, textures, shapes, size, all of that. So that is how you achieve radial balance. Something I thought I would show you as well, but the two main ones are obviously symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance. So that's it guys. I thought I would give you a comprehensive look into visual balance and therefore included this short section about radial balance as well. But there you go, symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance and radial balance. And I hope that by now you became an expert at visual balance and that you will use it wisely the next time you create a design. All right, so as always, I will leave you guys with our playlist right here where you can find the other episodes of the graphic design principles. This was episode number five already and this other video that I think you might find interesting as well. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.